Hello, welcome back to the lab. In today's video, I'm going to show off all of my chiptune players I've created over the years. It all started in 1994 with this first one. This has an 8085 in it and a 6510. And I was 19 years old, and when I built this, I thought it was the greatest thing because this is the first time I ever built a multiprocessor system or anything with a microcontroller like this for that matter. And then in 99, I came up with the second one. This is stereo. And this has a 80 macro cell CPLD in there, and there's a 65816 that's playing the music and running the user interface. And then in 2003, I came up with this SID man. This is a quote unquote portable SID player. This is stereo, also runs off of batteries. And then it has an LCD. And this has um, got two SID chips and eight AA cells would run this for eh, five or six hours. And there's a pick in there doing the emulation duty for the 6502 and then in 2009 I came up with this one this is a multi-format chiptune player this will play SID, SAP, NSF, Game Boy, FM music and some other things and then in 2013 I came up with this one this is my fifth iteration this is again a multi-format chiptune player but I haven't created the other uh, FPGA builds for SID and NSF. I can probably do it fairly easily, I just haven't done it. So right now this plays SPCs and this has a PIC, or yeah, PIC32 and a Cyclone 3 FPGA in it. And over here are some prototypes. So here right here, I'm sure a lot of people recognize this. This is the, the Hardness player and this had a NES CPU. There's a little headphone amplifier. RAM chip, EEPROM, and a, that 80 macro cell CPLD, and PlayStation memory cards to hold the music, which wasn't in the end, wasn't really a good idea, but it did work. And then this is the prototype for the SID man. This is the prototype of the SID filter clone I created, this the analog circuit. This plugged into the FPGA video game board, and then I could run the audio through that. SID filter and see what it sounded like and then that's SID filter is in this player here and then this is a SPC player using the module out of a Super Nintendo and then a PIC and then this is a FM music player and this would play CMF files Opal 2 went in here, DAC, audio amplifier, volume control another 8085, some SRAM and a little EEPROM and then a port chip and a latch and that was pretty much it I never, that never really went very far, but this this player here has the FM synthesis in it, so it does a lot more than that ever could. So getting right to it, we'll start with the first SID player I ever made when I was 19 years old. And we'll see if it still works, and I'll run it through the computer and play several tracks. Well, here it is. This is the front, obviously. There's a power switch, LCD keypad I stole off one of those old bag phone cell phones headphone jack volume control increment decrement subtune start stop restart and pause on the back there's simply a audio out RCA jack and the power socket on the side there's a spot for a speaker but the speaker isn't in there I'll turn it on see if it works and it does you can see that terrible name I chose for it, but I was only 19, so you can cut me a little slack. Shows how big the EEPROM is. And yes, it is a C64 music player. So, what you can do, you can hit increment and decrement to go up and down. And then this will start it. stop and go through so like this has five subtunes here go to the second one start it third one so that went through all the subtunes and then it shows you what two numbers so if you want 299 you can hit 99 but you have to hit since it's a three digit you have to hit 099 and then the buttons have some little bounce in them. And then I can you know, restart and then pauses. It 
just stops the interrupt, so what do you expect? It's showing this is a 50 hertz tune right here. And this shows which which uh, SID tune and then the sub tune number. So if you change, you know that you're on 97 still, for example. And these are our 1994 era SID tunes. So as such, the names and artists and all that may be slightly to wildly wrong. And I know some, some of those, some sub-tunes were missing, but the SID tunes are stored on an EEPROM and it's not terribly easy to swap that out. So next, I will open it up and show how it works. Here it is. The cover comes off. Then there's this static bag that has a DC to DC converter in it. And the reason it's in that bag is because normally this used to be soldered to the bottom of one of them perf boards, but over time the solder pulled the pads off, so it's flopping around. So just for now, I've been throwing it in there. It seems to be okay. And there's a power supply board here. I'm doing one nut. Removes the power supply. Like that. So on the power supply board, there's a 7805, which is running the SID chips 5 volts to kind of keep the noise out. A switching 5 volt buck regulator and just some caps, audio amplifier. Speaker hooked up there. And then take this ribbon cable off. And you can see the board here. And this has the SID chip on it, 64K of SRAM. There's an A255 port chip. 6510, some glue logic, and a 300 hertz interrupt source. This 300 hertz runs into the interrupt of the 8085 that's on the board below it. Then that divides by 5 or 6 and pulses the IRQ line on the 6510, and that's how it'll do 50 or 60 hertz playback. That's all it'll do. It can't do anything else. This is a very basic SID player, and I was 19 years old when I designed it, so it kind of shows. It's made out of Radio Shack perf board. And then there's some logic on here that decodes the SID's address space. So basically, the only thing in memory is the SID chip and then the rest of the 64K of SRAM. There's no port chips that, uh, you know, no 6526s, so you can't do interrupt timers or any of that. And then this A255 is run by the 8085, and this, what this does, this will tri-state the 6510's address and data bus, and then it has full control over this SRAM and it will poke data from the 8085 into the 6510's address space that way. If I pull up on the board here, like that, and slide this out carefully. Connector on the bottom gets hung up. There. So there's the 6510 SID board. Not a lot on the back, just a connector. And then we have the 8085 here. So there's an 8085 here, ADC85. These connectors go to those switches on the front here. And the keypad, actually. There's a reset button. Uh, our an RJ whatever that's four pins, that's the serial debug. And I would communicate to the 885 through the serial port, and that's how I debug the code. I could upload new code to this SRAM and run it. And that's a 32K SRAM. There's an 8K EEPROM that's running that menu. And then a 512K EEPROM with a mega window that's holding the SID tunes. So there's like, what, 100 and some in there. So I'd have to change this to change the music, which is kind of a drag. And then there's the connector here that hooks up to the top board. And that's pretty much all that's in here. There's really not a lot to it. The next one will be a lot more complicated than this.
as promised, here are some example tunes that have been recorded directly off that RCA jack by my computer. And I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you. 